Hey guys, Nishquick here, and we got some very awesome, really cool information literally last night as I was playing Xenogears last night. I saw this on Twitter and I wanted to talk about it. So, big news, Monolith Soft and Tetsuya Takahashi himself is recruiting for a new project. Well, the fact that Monolith Soft is even making a new game is really not really news because of course they're making new games but I think it's really interesting to point out that specifically this message is from Takahashi and I wanted to sort of speculate on what this could mean what this could be and why it is very important that this is coming from Takahashi himself and I might reference another video that I made earlier this year about the rumored project legacy game so we can talk about that as well let's read this kind of skim through it also, this uh, translation is from Lugal Banda at Xenomira. I'll have the website and this article linked in the description below. Marlosov's production Division 1 development staff, which is something we haven't done in a while. We can't get into specifics. It'll be a new RPG title. So this is a new RPG title. I find that to be interesting. I am kind of sure that whatever is coming next from whatever Monolith Soft and Xenoblade is going to be doing is going to feel significantly different from what we know the mainline Xenoblade series and even Xenoblade X to be. So I'm excited and curious as to what this new RPG title, like, what is he saying? Of course he can't say too much. We have many talented colleagues as we are required to create, obviously continues to become more complex for the sake of convenience with limited number of recruited roles to eight. In general, we're searching on all fronts. Yeah, Monolith Soft is going to need a lot more people to create a lot more larger scale and just much bigger games on the next Nintendo hardware. Yeah, th this I found pretty interesting. Spoke about this in the last recruitment. Monolithsoft has been creating titles with a relatively small amount of people compared to its scale. It's no doubt something to be proud of, but it's difficult to keep relying on that in the video game industry landscape. So we always talk about Monolithsoft wizardry, how they're so good at what they do. They're like not as big as like EPD or like from software or uh, like development studios like that i'm just giving some examples but they still produce very very good games very large scale very expensive games for the switch hardware like it, it's still hard to believe that <laughs> games like xenoblade 2 3 and even xenoblade x are running on their respective hardware yeah basically he just wants to provide a more efficient and more cohesive development environment for their tokyo studio which is their big major xenoblade team in meeting the heightening expectations an important thing is various insights and ability to connect those laterally role-playing genres one the mechanics of field combat characters side quests all closely in interconnected this is doubly true for open world styles it become commonplace now. Segmented production is honestly very difficult. Of course, it would be impossible if that lateral cooperation was not present. Basically, yeah, they just want to grow the team, bring in more talent, make it so that cross-functional collaboration and development for these games that are going to just get bigger in scale and scope is just going to be more manageable and easier for them. Of course, the new hardware is going to be a boon and it's going to be a great asset to them. They they worked on the Switch and the Wii U for a very long time. They would love to do things with better hardware, but of course with better hardware with more resources comes the need for more talent, obviously. And I think it's interesting that he doubled down on this being an open world title. I mean, he's just speaking in general, but I think it's safe to say that whatever is coming is going to be large in scale, like what we know Xenoblade to be. Oh, so I didn't see this. This is uh, Lugal Banda's commentary. So basically what he's saying is he wants to take another go, or he meaning Takashi wants to take another go at the fully open world style of Xenoblade, which he did for X, but a lot of things were left on the cutting room floor and they couldn't fully develop X to the extent that they wanted, and this might be his kind of redemption and like another stab at that kind of genre. And I kind of agree with that, but I 
do want to give my own take on what I think this is. I think X is a very possible outcome, but we did in the past talk about what Project Legacy could be. And I was saying it could be this potential new IP for Monolith Soft. And I am very unsure if this is going to be that new IP. And I will also say this, we don't even know if that new IP even exists, if it's ever happening, if it ever was a thing in the first place. We did have that um, concept art for that a uh, medieval fantasy character. Let me at least pull up my uh, hey YouTube thumbnail for it. Um, yeah, this this character over here. If um, I what is if I have that somewhere here, yeah, yeah. This, if this is still a thing, I'm I'm not sure if it is, but. This is what I always thought Project Legacy to be, starting a new project, and this would potentially be what their next main game for the Nintendo Switch 2 would be, or their big debut game for that uh, system as well. A lot of people are saying, this is Monolith Soft's break year, and the next year we're going to get something for the first year of the Switch 2. I, uh, I, I'm pretty certain that this game from Takahashi, this new RPG, I guess we'll just call it new RPG, uh, I don't know what else to call it, um, I don't think we'll see this next year, and I'll get to exactly why in a bit, but my uh, kind of uh, speculation and headcanon for Future of Wild Soft, I guess you could say, is this is our break year, next year, since they have potentially been cooking up this new IP, I feel like that'll be the launch title for the next Nintendo console. And it'll be showing off new things like a massive open world, new uh, new kind of fantasy genre, a uh, new combat system, um, extensive multiplayer mechanics. That's what I'm hoping to see for their first uh, venture into um, the Nintendo Switch 2. And a lot of that will harken back to Xenoblade Chronicles X and make it more of like maybe Nintendo's uh, Final Fantasy XIV kind of MMO style game. This new I uh, new RPG, <laughs> new IP, new RPG. I'm getting get, getting mixed up there. This new RPG, I am very certain it is in pre-production, and I think development is moving smoothly on this, but. I don't think that we will see this very soon. The reason why is since it is a Takahashi-led project, it is a Takahashi-directed project. The uh, tweet from Marlosoft Soft said it is a project uh, which is going to be directed by Takahashi. I think this is going to be the next Xeno game. I don't think that this is a Xeno game. The new IP. I don't think will be Xeno related. The new RPG, I hate that name, this new RPG I think will be the next Xeno game. I am not really set on calling it Xenoblade yet, I think it will be called Xenoblade something or whatever, Xenoblade Chronicle something, but I'm just calling it Xeno for now. And the reason is, let's look at Takahashi's um, credits here, here he is, Tetsuya Takahashi, the man himself. So let's look at all the Xeno games. Xeno Gears, he was the director, obviously. That was his first directorial debut, and that happened the way it did. It was a little chaotic, a lot of inexperienced staff. So he was the director, and his uh, wife, Soria Saga, was the scenario writer. Xeno Saga Episode 1. This was the first game that he directed with the newly founded Monolith Soft. He was the director. And Xenosaga Episode 2, this is interesting, I didn't realize this till kind of recently. This this kind of little tidbit will come in to play a little bit later. Xenosaga Episode 2 is not directed by Takahashi, as you can see. Original author and supervisor. So, I mean, it's still his story, original author, and he was supervising the way this game was going to go, but he was not the director of the game. I forgot who did it. I, like, his name is in my head a little bit, but I don't want to make assumptions for what his name is. I forgot, actually, I forgot. So, the reason Takahashi didn't direct this game 
is because from what I heard recently, I have to go and do some more research, is Monolith Soft was still relatively small and he wanted other people to gain experience and talent and work on this Xenosaga series to slowly expand it and grow the series. So it's not like Bamco pushed him out of the, the directorial seat and said, no, someone else is going to go in there. No, it was kind of Takahashi's choice to have someone else direct it so that Xenosaga brand could expand within the Monolith Soft team because other people were doing other games like um uh what's his name um Yasuyuki Hone was doing Botan Kaidos and Ko Kojima joined during that time and was doing Botan Kaidos as well so I think this was Takahashi's idea of kind of expanding the scope of Monolith Soft having other people newer developers newer staff kind of getting the same experience that he was getting as well um that's sort of what i understood from watching some videos i have to go back and do a little bit of more research on that but uh xenosaga 3 he had a similar kind of role supervisor of scenario and database so yeah he was still involved in somewhat of a more um hands-on role with xenosaga 3 but as we can see here for Xenoblade Chronicles, his main thing with Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, all the games on when he started working with Nintendo, was he was a scenario writer for all of them, as you can see. He was in charge of the scenario for even, like, basically everything. Except for X, but he was in charge of the concept, which was still something. And the, uh, Three Future Redeemed, all the DLCs, he's in charge of the scenario. But he was also an executive director for all of them. So executive director still means he has like a say in a lot of how things go, the overall vision of these games. Because if you look at Xenoblade 2, Xenoblade 3, you'll see that the directors, like the main director position is usually someone like Ko Kojima from Monolith Soft and then Genki Yokota from Nintendo. So you can see game designer, director, 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 and director. So Ko Kojima has directed all of the Xenoblade games. Tetsuya Takahashi as an executive director is probably more of like a overall vision kind of person whereas Ko Kojima is going into every nitty gritty detail, every little bit of the um, gameplay, the mechanics, the feel, the world direction, the world design, all the nitty gritty whereas Tetsuya Takahashi is mostly in charge of the scenario and the overall vision and scope of these games that's kind of what i'm getting at and one thing i wanted to note over here which brings me back to this new rpg directed by tetsuya takahashi i feel like this project is different from this project because I'm under the assumption that this project will be spearheaded and developed by someone else at Monolith Soft. So remember what I said about Xenosaga Episode 2, Takashi wanted to take a step back, have new people involved within Monolith Soft and take higher level positions as directors and scenario writers, this, that, or the other. Look at this. Takahashi was involved in Future Redeemed and everything, like scenario, voice director, executive director, because like that that's his thing. Future Redeemed was his thing. Ko Kojima was not involved in Future Redeemed. And if we go over here, he specifically says that. Like, I have not been able to participate in the development of the expansion pass, but the content looks like a lot of fun as I've been watching from the sidelines, so I'm a little jealous. So this interview came out, it was with all the directors of Xenoblade 3, senior director, director, director. This is Genki Okuta, the Nintendo guy I was talking about. This was right when Xenoblade 3 released in July 2022. This was when Future Redeemed was still in the polishing stages and still being developed. Kokojima was not a part of the development of Future Redeemed. So since he's like a producer and a director, what the heck was he doing? 
I, I, I'm still wondering what the heck was he doing and even other like Xeno fans and Xeno YouTubers and content creators like Luxon were saying that there are people who were involved in the development of Xenoblade Chronicles X and Future Connected very very heavily, very extensive in those um, uh, entries and they haven't really been credited in Xenoblade 2 or Definitive Edition or Xenoblade 3 as of now and that's pretty interesting to me. I was like, I never realized that there's so many people within Monolith Soft and there's so many things going on and so many other people might be working on other projects that we don't even know anything about. He was not involved in the development of Future Redeemed. So what the heck was he working on? I'm assuming he's working on this game. So imagine this. This is this is my vision. This is my like I was calling it like my head cannon. Imagine new IP developed by Ko Kojima and other Monolith Soft staff who were absent from Xenoblade 2, Xenoblade 3. Well, yeah, why was this taking so long? I don't know. Maybe for other related purposes that they, they were just in a lot of pre-production. So Ko Kojima is working on this project and possibly directing it with other Monolith Soft staff who were not credited on Xenoblade 3 and Future Redeemed. And then you have this new RPG, which I am assuming to be the next Xeno game because you see Takahashi is involved in almost every single Xeno game in some way, shape, or form, and in most of them, he is either a director or an executive director. And whenever he's in the directive chair or in some sort of directorial role with his games, he has a solid, like, vision of what he wants, and he has a solid idea of how he wants the story to go. And yeah, I, I can definitely see Takahashi opening the doors for other Monolith Soft staff to direct their own games unrelated to Xenoblade Chronicles. Like, Baten Kaidos is a great example, like Yasuyuki Hone, Hiroya, Hatsushiba were the directors of these games, and Takahashi wasn't really involved in something like this, and it was a way for Monolith Soft to kind of branch out and do new things. So. If this still exists, if this is like a new multiplayer MMO kind of thing directed by Ko Kojima and other developers within Monolith Soft, I'm excited for this. But I want to end off by talking about the new RPG and what I think the direction of this game is. Because Lugobanda Hero is talking about how it might be similar in style to Xenoblade X in terms of its open world and things like that. Based on the new hires, I think that is definitely something we can possibly look forward to. But I wanted to go back to these quotes from Takahashi here. Rather than playing on the defense, going on the offense, change rather than maintain. This stance I have continued to hold for 30 years. There's another Xenoblade, it will likely be vastly different from what came before in style and music. I would like the next goal and betray everyone's ex expectations in a good way. So basically what he's saying here is he wants the next Xenoblade game, if the series ever continues, which I'm sure it will, to be very different in style and music. Because this was for the Trinity Box set. This was a interview he did for the Trinity Box set. And over here, with this new RPG, we're taking on more new challenges than we've had with Monolith Soft titles up to this point. I mean, it's not exactly similar in how he's talking about it and branding it, but he wants to try new things. He wants to take a few more risks, which is always what Monolith Soft does. They always take new risks, and he's going on the offense with this game. So I think this new RPG is the next Xeno game or the next Xenoblade game. I'm I'm very confident in that. I'm not sure if it's going to be Project Legacy. I feel like Project Legacy will come a little bit before, but I think this will be the next Xeno game. Let's see what else he has to say here. 
oh this is crazy so <laughs> this was during ionios moments where we had a lot of questions on some lore stuff and we did that survey where we can post like ask questions about the lore of xenoblade 3 and basically he's saying in this quote that he can't answer all those because they will eventually be answered in the future let's see their answers are basically all the questions we wrote in the survey simply i think i it may not be necessary to answer all of these things now, therefore we can continue to make things in the future. I think there may be a time when there will be able to provide answers. Where, yeah, many people want to know how Xenoblade 3 is going to end and he doesn't want to go into that right now because he just wants to like have that be a mystery and you'll know once you get the new Xenoblade game. And I think the next game is the new RPG and if I, I just noticed this guys look at this this new RPG I, I don't know what any of this Japanese says but this is like Xenoblade font this is Xenoblade coloring that like drop shadow the colors the red the font styling even like the background of it like th th this is this is Xenoblade like th this whole like graphic over here gives me Xenoblade vibes it really really does that, that, that's just me. Maybe that's a little bit far-reaching. I don't know. I don't know about you guys. You can let me know about that in the comments below. One more thing. Um, yes. So, Xenoblade 3 is a culmination of the series. Summary from moving forward onto the next step. So, this is a quick little blurb from the same uh, developer series with uh, Yokota Kojima and Takahashi. So, basically, Yokota is saying... Like, Takahashi's saying that Xenoblade 3 is the culmination of the Cloud Saga. He doesn't really say that, but he kind of hints at that. So Yokota says, So by culmination, you don't mean that it brings closure to the series, but rather it rounds out the trilogy thematically. Takashi says, Yes, that's right. I guess you can say that this is like a summary for moving on to the next step in the future. This, I, I'm very sure, very certain, the since this is directed and going to be led by takahashi and he's just wanting to expand the team wanting to make this as good and as great as it can be i have a very strong feeling that whatever is being talked about and being promoted in this recruitment message is for the next xenoblade game I don't think we'll see it anytime soon. I don't even think we'll like see it announced next year or whenever the Switch 2 is announced. Because I feel like if they have a game ready for release soon, I think it'll be Project Legacy and it'll be this game. I don't think this is Project Legacy. I think Project Legacy is not related to <laughs> um, Xenoblade in any way. I um, if Project Legacy is a thing, if it's coming, if it's real, if it's legit, I think it'll be a new IP. It may not be exactly like this fantasy RPG. I don't know what it'll be. My idea is that it's like a open world multiplayer kind of game in a fantasy setting. We'll see. But now that I think about it, I, I can't get my eyes off of how much this branding and styling and font styling and like the drop shadow and like the red it just it just screams xenoblade even this background it's it, it reminds me of a xenoblade kind of image you know so yeah i guess that's everything i wanted to talk about that's my thoughts on what this new game from monolith soft is going to be and yeah i'm, I'm sorry you might have seen some very silly ads all over the place i'm starting to use firefox a little bit more and I don't know when this video is going to come out, when it's going to release this week, but in the meantime, I would love it if you guys gave my new Xenoblade Chronicles 1 video a watch. I'm really proud of how this video turned out, and I'm really excited for some of you guys to watch it, and please let me know what you think about it in the comments of this video and what you think about all the stuff I just talked about, about the new IP, oh, where did, yeah, the new IP and the new RPG in the comments of this video. This is Nish Quick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today, like anything Modelist Soft has made and done and developed. I'll see you guys in the next one later.
Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching that video. And if you enjoyed it, check out these two videos on the left and maybe subscribe if you haven't on your way out. And big shout out to all my channel members whose names you can see on the screen right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.